Hey, what's going on? Wait, hold on. Ugh. <laughs> What's going on, man? It's your boy, Sir Dynamic, here on Sir Dynamic TV, and we are here for episode three. I appreciate y'all for being on this journey with me. So today in this episode, we're going to talk about literally my beginning stages of when I semi started dancing and took it serious and then into when I turned about 2021. 20, That's when I legit was like, yeah, this is this is going to this is what I want to do So all the way to 2014. In 2014 is when, you know, graduated high school, I'm in college, and there was this team at the time in Central Jersey. Yes, Central Jersey is a thing. I don't care what nobody says, because I have a state championship ring for Central Jersey. So I don't care what nobody says. They were in Central Jersey, Lakewood, New Jersey to be exact. The team was called OPP. Team OPP, standing for Official Party Poppers, believe it or not. And that's exactly what they did, bro. Like, seeing these guys in action was really, like, you would even want to be a part of because they made it a family-oriented team. We all were young at the time. Some of us was in college and everything like that, so we were just still trying to bring the essence of, you know, how Jersey Club is for us and as well as just the partying culture back then. So, you know, just like how they were throwing parties up in Newark all the time, we would try to emulate the same type of thing, but obviously it's not gonna be the same because the culture originated more up north and versus down here and down south in the South Jersey area. So, you know, I, I spoke to my boy, Mike Fresh, who is the leader my boy LJ, my boy Tig, and it was me. And then my boy Herbie. Boy, let me tell like, when they when they brought me on board, man, it's, it was nothing but open arms, love, just genuine love as a group. And there was no stepping on each other's toes. It was literally the mindset of if we, if one makes it, we all make it. And it was just contagious to be around. So I would literally want to just hang out with them like they was my brothers by blood, but they wasn't. And just being around them was just dope. Like the whole experience with being with them and everything like that, it was just a time, man. It was just, you just had to be around to understand like what was happening, like the late night runs. We went to <laughs> going to IHOP. The damn t the, the nightclubs that we did. And I'm DJing at the time too, so I'm DJing, I'm dancing. So there was a time where we had went to this one club. It was like a strip club downstairs, but the actual like nightclub was upstairs, and it was crazy because we was up on both floors, <laughs> going uh, going crazy, bro. Like it was just it was a time for real, for real. Between what 2014, 2013, 2014. And then 2015 is when I had, you know, transferred schools and I had went to Rowan. And I went down more down south in New Jersey. But, you know, just to touch on OPP a little bit more and, you know, how dance really started taking off is when I'm not. All right. So let me just. All right. Let me just say this. Right. So I'm not going to mention this person's name because if it's not already public info this person does not mess with me anymore because of a situation that happened now i'm not gonna verbatim put this situation out there i was sitting on this because if i decided to put this information out there this would mess with the other people that are involved as well so it's not just about said person but it's about the other people that were also involved, including myself. Now, if we're going to just do labels or whatever, we're going to just do person A. I met person A during the time with Team OPP. It was a time where he was a part of another team. And then he saw our camaraderie as a brother brotherhood and as a team and how we you know operated 
and he saw something in that and we both shared the same ideals when it came to you know dance and the jersey club culture and just dance in general so there was one night we were at this club in uh perf amboy at the time or i think it was say it was between perf amboy or sayerville and it was a night team was out there our rival team at the time had showed up at the club so we was finna battle literally on the dance floor and for whatever reason he came through and we thought he was finna just you know take over and just start coming at everybody because i forget if person a was a part of a team or not at the time but he just started going at the arrival team and just started going crazy and doing all types of stuff. And I was just like, oh, what? Okay, word, say less. Then he went around and he was like, I'm team OPP now. We like, oh, shit. Like, you know, it was, it was a time, bro. Like, it was just all, all the things that transpired at that time. It was like unique. It was organic. It wasn't nothing like forced. It wasn't like fake it was legit you know what i'm saying so me and person a shared the same bond with time going over and we got close so with us getting close and stuff like that this also began our relationship you know getting closer and we're talking to the point where i think there was one night a team was going out together and before we even went anywhere, or I think we were on our way back from where we were at, and he started having some medical issues. And he, I don't know if he still has these issues to this day, but there was a time where he wasn't necessarily feeling too well. And we had to stop at, I believe, Walgreens or CVS or something like that. And we stopped there and I made sure we, st we sat in that drive through and waited for that pharmacy lady to you know give him his meds so that he can you know regulate himself so i'm saying all this because at the end of the day this person claims that i'm not his brother but if i wasn't your brother then my bro uh, being a brother i probably wouldn't have did that and you were in my car and i was driving so we're just gonna you know nip that in the bud right so with that being said person a feels the way he feels and i'm not knocking that but what i'm also not going to allow to be you know put out into the world is that my character was never in question when it came to whenever he needed me for something if i was able to do anything for him i was the first person to do it there was no questions no if ands or buts about it for all that to say, at the end of the day, person A, me and him don't necessarily speak anymore. And he decided to make that decision based off of his decisions that he decided to make. Now, when he made these decisions, at first, we still spoke. Then all of a sudden, he just stopped speaking with me. Now, I'm going to say because he found out that me and person B were closer now because of that whole situation that transpired but because person a and person b didn't like each other and already had fallen outs in the past now i'm in the middle so he probably felt like i picked team team <laughs> person b he felt like i took person b's side and just threw our whole friendship to the side when that was never the case because at the end of the day, when the situation arised and the information that was being brought to me, at the end of the day, I made the decision to be a real human being and a real brother. Because at the time, me, myself, person A, and person B were trying to put a team together. And when that didn't fall through because of certain events that transpired and then some other information that team, I keep saying team, person a received he went ahead and made an assumption so when this assumption was brought up to me i went ahead and said hmm i'm not gonna just let this sit here because i'm also close with person b so being a person that 
is literally close with both parties, I'm not going to just be like, okay, I'm going to sit here and just keep this secret because this also involves the person that I'm close with, which is person B. So I went ahead and went to person B to get clarification. Mind you, both of them have already had issues amongst each other. So with that being said, that's not my fault that person B decided to go off on person A. It's not my fault. But we're just going to keep it at that and move forward. So with that being said, that situation has run its course. I'm good with it. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to jeopardize my well-being to keep on trying to please person A. I've made my efforts to try to reach out to person A to dead this whole thing. Because if we were brothers, like I feel like we still would be, then this is something that we could both sit down and have a grown man conversation about. But because he decided to make the decision that he did, then he can sit with that. He can hold on to whatever grudge he wants to have because I don't have any negative malice or any type of negative thoughts towards him. I wish everything is going great for him. And I just seen a video about his company going through the roof business-wise and getting a whole percentage higher than what he ever probably made in his life. And that's exactly what he was even trying to do when he started doing his business. So I'm sitting here like, bro, I was literally a supporter of you when you even started it. So for me to sit here and just be like fake and being like, yeah, I don't care about what he's doing. No, I care because at the end of the day, I'm a human being and I saw you at your lowest. You saw me at my lowest. So how can you say and sit there with a straight face that you don't care? But it's okay because you got your mind made up and that's just what it's going to be. Neither here nor there. If that's what it is, then we will move forward. So. After Team OPP, we didn't disband, but we we got older. Everybody in life, you know, decided to transition. Everybody had a transition period because once we all got to maybe like the age of 22, 23, 24, that's when everybody's lanes were going different. So OPP is still a family. But in terms of like us throwing events, parties, and all that stuff like that, all that stuff ended. So it was, the, it was a great era, but every era comes to an end at some point. So that's what ended up happening, right? So fast forward. I'm at Rowan in the fall of 2015. And at the time, I'm still in football mode. So from 2013, 2014, I'm still in football mode. Like I'm still playing. I'm still trying to play in college. So dance was not as important because my mindset was student athlete. My schedule's already made. So literally it's football first. And if I had any time, then I would dance, but it would probably be in my dorm room or outside somewhere just to release some stress. If I was stressing from schoolwork or whatever the case may be. The situation with football and everything like that, that happened and I had to literally step away from the team. It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I just felt like I was just being treated unfairly. And that's just what it came down to. Like, I'm not going to be a part of a team that I'm not wanted, meaning I'm not being utilized. And knowing of my skill set, I was very capable to start or being in the starting rotation as a wide receiver for Rowan University. And they decided to go elsewhere with a transfer from Towson, who didn't play football because he registered both of the years that he was a part of the damn team. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, so when that happened and I stepped away, that's when I, you know, went into the whole, well, now I'm a student. I'm no longer a student athlete. What the hell am I going to do? There was a team on campus at the time. It was called Atomic Legacy. I think it's still called Atomic Legacy at the time. But that's when I officially started falling back in love with dance in terms of the passion for it. Like that's where the passion grew and it elevated to the level of this gets me the same type of excitement 
as me getting ready for a football game, like getting on stage and performing, just being in the studio and practicing, doing certain things to get myself better. Like all of that got me to the point where I was like, this is, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. This is exactly what I want to do. Cause at that time I felt like I was dope. I felt like I was one of the best dancers on campus and da 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 da. Bro, I look back at film and stuff like that of what I was doing when I was at Rowan early in my early years. <sighs> yeah, no, that was not doing nothing. <laughs> but it was early, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't necessarily something I was trying to boast about or make it seem like I'm the shit or whatever the case may be. But I was really like, I was trying to do that. I was trying to be the best at the time. Like at that time, that's when I was trying to be the best, one of the best in New Jersey. And I found out real quick, I ain't the best in New Jersey. <laughs> Yo, my first battle, just to fast forward, right? So that's 2015. 2016 is when I officially like took dance serious. My first battle was at this Filipino community uh, community center and it's in Stratford, New Jersey. I forget the name of it, but for the people that know, y'all know exactly where I'm talking about because they hold, they don't hold them anymore to my knowledge. I don't know if they do or not, but they used to hold all styles battles, open style breaking battles because Philly was right up the road. Like we're talking 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So whenever there would be like any uh, B-boy battles, B-girl battles happening in Philly. They would have like a adjacent event not happening the same day because, you know, Monster is big company. They sponsor all of that. But they would have an event. And nine times out of ten, you know, when it comes to breakdancing and B-boying, like they travel. Like we're talking B-boys travel for competitions. Like I've never seen anything like it. That was my first time being in a space where it was all it was an all styles and a breaking battle in one night and i met dancers from colorado cali texas uh washington the state washington washington state like we're talking they travel you know what i'm saying so that was my first experience seeing all of that and then i actually got in the battle i didn't make it past prelims because i just thought like I was going to make it just because, but I didn't understand how the format was. Like, I didn't understand it whatsoever, but I just got in there. And I think I did pretty good, but I didn't do good enough to make it past prelims. But that was like, that was beginning stages. You know what I'm saying? Like, ever since then, like, I would practice. That was my first time being a part of something. And I was just like, yo, like. Even though I didn't make it past prelims, just being in there and the energy in there, like, it was dope. I didn't stay the whole night because I just didn't understand how everything was. You know what I'm saying? So, after that, I think, what, that next, that summer, I battled again. And I had, like, an exhibition battle in New York. And I battled uh, this guy named Mimic. Now, Mimic, he is a influenced dancer from the Le twins so at the time mimic was pretty much doing moves verbatim like how larry would dance or how laurent would dance now to the dance world that would be considered biting or no yeah biting that would be considered like if you ever see anybody doing this that means you're biting. But I appreciate Mimic's influence because at the end of the day, the, the twins is dope. <laughs> so at the end of the day, if you can even do any of their moves, that's impressive as hell to me because they, they don't look like they stretch. They don't even look like they do too much to get themselves ready. So my thing is like, how do you... You got to put yourself through a lot of training to even allow your body to be able to move like that. And the fact that he was even able to mimic any of the movements was impressive to me. But I ended up winning the battle. And that was my first time winning a battle. And that was just against me versus a person. After that battle, 
I battled again in New York, but it wasn't until like years later, like 2016, 2017. I battled on the platform um, Rounds of Flames, and I battled this guy who was considered, I guess, a dance hall dancer. At this time, you know, I was more experienced. I was in the ring a little bit more, X, Y, and Z. You know, I had I would go to battles here and there in Philly since I was right around the corner from Philly, like 30 minutes away, and it would legitimately be like, that was my first time being in New York on a bigger platform and it was hella people in the crowd so i was kind of nervous for real but i still wasn't stage for it I, I had no stage fright because every time i would be on the stage i would take advantage of that shit and at that time i was like ain't nothing getting in my way like i was finna win there was no way around that <laughs> so i did end up winning that battle but you know i look back at that film and i'm just like bro i was just out there grooving but the one thing I've always realized about myself is it would be the shoes that I would wear. And then depending on the type of shoes that I would wear would really determine my stamina because of the amount of movements that I would do, the stress that I would put to my legs and not understanding like the pacing, my breathing and just all overall, I would be gassed before I can even make it to the second round sometimes. Hoping that, you know, when my opponent goes first or something like that, that allows me to strategize, peep the scenery out, you feel me, and just go from there. Um, so that was what, 2017, 2016, that was from between 2015 to 2018, stuff like that, like, that was the beginning stages of me taking dance serious and me trying to be in the field type shit, right? Um, 2019 was a big year for me because that was when I was finally able to get a solo performance of myself and I was on stage for like at least 10 minutes. How I even did that is beyond me, but I did that and it was, you know, I titled the performance The Breakthrough. Like, that was at that time where I felt like I was at a point in my dance career where I was finally getting my identity as a dancer. I was very much influenced by other styles, and I still am, but I didn't necessarily have an identity of when you see me dance, you know that's dynamic. Like, I didn't have none of that. So that's when I finally found my identity. And then, you know, 2020 happened. COVID. 2020 was supposed to be the year that I did more traveling to battle platforms in different states. That was the year that I was going to travel a lot more. Because in the beginning of that year, I went to Thesis in Tampa. I didn't make it past prelims. But that was the first time I went to a platform of that magnitude. What we're talking about, different countries showed up. Russia, uh, Ukraine. Uh, China, Japan, everywhere in the United States pulled up to Tampa, Florida. That was my first time being like able to understand like dance is that serious around the world to a lot of people, especially in the street dance world. So for me, that was crazy. And I was just in awe of everything. Like I wasn't even there to win. I was just under, I wanted to just be around the community. Like it was a party Friday. No, it was a party Thursday. It was the sh dance showcase on Friday. The dance battle was on Saturday. And the dance classes was on Sunday. This year in particular, I was able to meet and take the class of uh, Paradox. Paradox is one of my favorite dancers. Just because his language resonates with me so much. And what I mean by language is his dancing language. How he trains and what he has incorporated in his dance is through martial arts and he was able to take that form of martial arts which is i believe <sighs> wing chun i could be wrong and he made that just so soothing to the eye whenever he dances because everything that he does is clear concise he writes literally sentences when he dances and you can tell whenever he puts a period a comma x y and z like his language is top tier that's why whenever he does dance or battle 
there's a lot of people that are afraid of him because of what he can do and what he's capable of. So I was able to take his dance, take his dance class and have a conversation with him. And that was dope in the whole nutshell. That, sh that junk was crazy. I still have film to this day from that day. Um, but yeah, then ever since that day, man, like that was 2020. So COVID happened. Thesis happened before COVID hit. Then COVID hit. That's when I really had to dive down into, you know, who I was as a dancer, you know, with all that time to really, you know, practice, train, shit like that to keep myself active. So from that on to from what, that was 2020 and we're now we're in 2024. I've upgraded exponentially and I've been able to really get into my dance to the point where now I'm 29 and I have a lot of, you know, different people that would like to learn from me. And like I said in the beginning, I don't know if it was in two or if it was in the first one, but I'll be the first one to say, like, I don't have a lot of battles on my resume. I don't have a lot of exhibition battles on my resume. I don't battle like that, period, because of politics. And because that's a whole video in itself, but we're not even going to touch on that. Politics is a, a big thing when it comes to a lot of these dance battle platforms. And because of that, it's negated my ability to go and battle more, especially in the tri-state area, I'll say. But if you go out of state, it's not like that. It's actually fair from my experience, but neither here nor there. Um, so with all of that, you know, like I've been fortunate enough to understand, like, this is something that made me happy a lot. Like every time I dance, I was very much happy. Whenever I wouldn't be dancing for a good amount of time, that's when things would start to sway for me. And whenever I'm not dancing, that's when things get a little iffy, you know what I'm saying? So... I will always continue to dance. I will never stop dancing. Um, I really feel like that touched a lot. So I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. I did plan on doing like six episodes, but I really don't think I need to do all of that because I kind of just wrapped up. Right. So um, probably in episode four, I'm just going to end things off with, you know, just thanking a certain amount of people that have helped me along the way, giving them shout outs and everything like that, because I honestly feel like that is the right thing to do. So with that being said, y'all, I appreciate y'all for listening to me in this journey and everything like that. But I think that's going to be it. Um, you know, dance has really been that factor for me in my life. And it's brought me to a whole bunch of places. And as well as, you know, giving me the opportunity to run my own dance platform, Dynamic Battle Royale. You know, I started that in March of 2018 and it became a staple in my opinion, but because of where I am in my life and the lack of consistency, I haven't been able to really throw events like I would want to on a regular basis, but you know, maybe I can hopefully do some more in the near future, but as of right now, you know, it's not really in my best interest business-wise because if it was up to me I'd do it no problem but business-wise it just doesn't make sense because I would lose money trying to put events together and I don't even make the money back but you know at the end of the day it comes with it it's the life that I chose so I'm always going to be able to do whatever I can for the culture for the community especially the Jersey Club community because that's the first you know community that I was exposed to and I always want to make sure I give back to that community because that's where my roots are. So we're going to see, man, like it's 2024 and we can only see what happens and it only goes up from here. So I'll see y'all in episode four, man. Appreciate y'all.